ಸುರುಚಿರಾನಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋತ್ಥಮೇರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಘನಶ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಭಗವಾನನೀ ಜಯ ಆಲ್ಮೈಟಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಅವರ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಪಾದ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಭಗತ್ ಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಇನ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಆನಿ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಾನ್ ವೆದರ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಾನ್ ಟು ಹಿಂದೂ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಮುಸ್ಲಿಮ್ or even a person who is a christian but after some period he passed as his childhood and when he become as a child who can understand first thing he understand and first thing he know that is about his parents who is my mother and who is my father this is what the first understanding which the every boy has in the same fashion we have in spiritual world as a spiritual aspirant from the day when we are come into this satsang fellowship the day when we really understand the path of liberation the day when we understand this sadhu this ekantik sadguru is the only grant me the ultimate liberation that that is our first day in the satsang that is our born but after some time when we passes our days in the satsang and when we grew up in some age on wage on 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 the wage that we can understand what is our parents same thing in religion we have to understand who is my father and who is my spiritual mother i am not talking about our worldly father and mother we have to know about the eternal father and mother eternal parents eternal relatives so we should also not we should but we must understand this fact and for that bhagwan swaminarayan himself says in the vachanamrut 18th vachanamrut or vartal chapter Bhagwan says one should know the line of succession of our gurus because without the help and without the guidance of one's guru one cannot walk in the path of liberation so to live in this system fellowship we have to take refuge of a particular a uh, bona fide ekantik sadguru if we have taken the refuge of bhagwan sekantik sadguru then we should understand we we must know about the succession of our gurus bhagwan has given here in the vachanamrut the example bhagwan says ramanand swami was the form of uddhav himself and in a dream that same ramanand swami was initiated into the vaisnav fold by ramanujacharya himself in sri rangkshetra so ramanand swami's guru was ramanujacharya and i am ramanand swami's disciple one should understand the succession of gurus in this manner now this is the succession of bhagwan swami narayan himself and that is why he had given his own example that my guru is ramanand swami and his guru is ramanujacharya so bhagwan says my guru's succession 
माय ट्रेडिशन इज कम फ्रॉम रामानुजाचार्य फर्स्ट गुरु इज रामानुजाचार्य एंड देन आफ्टर रामानंद स्वामी एंड देन रामानंद स्वामी डिसाइपल इज माय सेल्फ मींस भगवान हिमसेल्फ नाउ भगवान सेज इन दिस वे वन शुड अंडरस्टैंड द सक्सेशन ऑफ गुरुज इन दिस मैनर सो नाउ we should understand of our own succession when we talking about our own succession then with reference to this vachanamrut we can proudly say that muktanand swami muktanand swami is the first guru of our succession of the gurus Muktanand Swami was the disciple as well as the guru of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Now, then after, Adharanand Swami was the disciple of Muktanand Swami. In this way, we have our present, presently manifested guru in the form of our Pujya Guru Ji. from muktanand swami to our guru ji that is our succession of gurus we should know about the about the biography meaning life sketch and uh, all the incidents about our gurus because without the knowing of the life's incidents of our gurus we cannot understand how they are the great if we want to walk on the same path on which our gurus were walking always now if we want to walk on the same path we continue the same tradition by our life we have to know about our guru's life his attitude his principles and all about his glory so we should know about our succession of the gurus first and foremost bhagwan is the guru of all after bhagwan we have sadguru muktanand swami muktanand swami's disciple was sadguru adharanand swami Adharanand Swami's disciple was Sadguru Sri Hari Priya Das Ji Swami, and Sadguru Hari Priya Das Ji Swami's disciple was Vaikun Charan Das Ji Swami, and after Vaikun Charan Das Ji Swami, we have the gurus in the name of Sadguru Sri Pur uh, Sadguru Purani Sri Narayan Swarup Das Ji Swami. who is the dada guru ji of our guru then after our dada guru ji sadguru sri nand kishor das ji swami who is the guru of our pujya guru ji and then after we have the our pujya guru ji we know all about him now this is the command of bhagwan himself and bhagwan says that this fact that must be understood by all my disciples if we want to grow and develop our own tradition we must know about our great succession if a prince cannot understand what the great warrior or how the great his father his forefathers are then how can he gains some inner strength without knowing the character and virtues of his parent uh, of his father and forefathers in the same way if we know the glory of our gurus we can have some inner and some extraordinary strength in our life for this purpose bhagwan himself had given us the command to understand and must know about our succession of the gurus now we only know about uh, we only know the names of our successions of gurus 
but we cannot even try to understand how great they are really in our life if we want to develop our spiritual life if we want to progress very speedily on the path of liberation we must know this fact for this purpose now right now from the 1st november to 6 november in india our religious capital in the vartal our guruji is now celebrating the great festival in the remembrance of his guru means our dada guruji sadguru sri nand kishor das ji swami sadguru smruti mahotsav the purpose behind this festival this grand celebration is only one that is to remember once sadguru now the question is that why should we remember our guru no doubt in the many places in the scriptures it is written that we have to know and every disciple had to know and remember the glory and greatness of bhagwan but now why for the saints why for the gurus the answer also written in the vachanamrut bhagwan himself says whenever one has some disturbing thoughts in the form of lust anger arise jealousy all from all form, uh, forms of vices at the time we should chant the bhagwan's holy name as well as one should pray to the saints like muktan and swami and one should remember his form when one remember the real character and virtues of the saints of one's guru then one can autom- automatically divert one's mind and thinking and start thinking about the glory and virtues of one's guru and saints by this progress one can divert one's mind and finally fix one's mind on the form of bhagwan this is the only way this is the only easiest way to walk on the path of liberation as we all are the spiritual aspirant we always seek for the ultimate liberation we always desire to have a god realization so now it is our duty to find out the easiest way to reach our ultimate goal now we have the way in our hand we have the easiest way and that is to understand the glory of one's guru if we understand the glory and greatness of our, our guru ji we can gain some extra strength to walk on the path of liberation for this purpose in india the grand celebration is now cel- now in progress and we here also should talk and listen about the glory of our puja dada guru ji for that purpose i just try to sanctify my tongue my speech by glorifying and narrating the narrating in brief the life sketch and some incidents from the life of our pujya dada guru ji it is very very difficult task to speak about a saint because how can we judge the saint because the ju- uh, because the saint is beyond the judgment nobody can merely observing saints outer behavior nobody can easily understand how the great that saint may be because even bhagwan himself when come on this earth and assume a form of a human being he always behaves as the human he always become hungry sometimes he perform penance austerities 
Sometimes he accept whatever the devotee is offered to him. Sometimes he become very very terrified, sometimes he become fearful and sometimes becomes fearless. Just as we have some just as we have some natural qualities as a human being, Bhagwan also accept those qualities as a human because if he cannot grasp this human like quality then even the humans cannot understand and he had no love for bhagwan if a human ordinary human cannot develop love for bhagwan as well as his saint how can he walk on the path of liberation so only to liberate the countless jivas Bhagwan as well as his divine muktas he liberated souls his personal attendant they always possess the human form for the liberation of the countless jeevs countless humans like us in the same way our dada guru ji he had himself desired to take a birth on this earth ultimately he is the permanent resident of bhagwan's divine abad aksardham he had no need to come here on this earth but for liberation of our soul myself as well as, uh, as, well as yourselves he come from divine aksardham for us not he come for permanent but while staying in the aksardham he just visualize by others on this earth on 3rd june 1925 he present on this earth in the very remote village named limadra near junagadh now when he born on this earth after getting human birth human body he now started to play like a human no doubt just as in a movie or in a film you know or in the stage sometimes in a drama a person performed role of a uh, dada khachar or sura khachar or sometimes the same person is performing the role of bhagwan swami and himself in the same way the liberated soul from aksardham now playing a role of ordinary human being but something different f- their lives from us because their lives always lead ordinary human being to the path of god and for this purpose even though he plays with the other kids as a human as an ordinary boys but still if we focus our mind with our heart and with the eyes of the scriptures we can find out very very different situation from us in the life of our pujya dada guru ji because in his childhood he plays with the kids but not like the ordinary kids he always gather all the other kids of the village and he always talking about god even his childhood age to others he always leads other other kids to the path of bhagwan he always chant the dunes with the kids not only this but how should a child how the children should be how with his parents he preach he preach the kids not by merely speech but by his own life he always 
give respect to his parents always shows his parents he help the parents to their work not only this but for the preaching to the youths and the other householder devotees he always after some age when he come near to age of 15 or 16 he always went to his farm to help his father now in the farm just as here in the us the most youth they always go to their job in the offices in the same way he has he had an office in the form of farm his father had a farm his business was a farmer of of a farm and so for for the purpose of farming he always went to his farm with his lunch but he never it alone he first closed his eyes while sitting under the tree in the farm he prayed to bhagwan he offered whatever he had in the lunch now after offering to bhagwan if we had the other employees in the farm he distributed all the he distributed the his own lunch to the other employees if there were no any employees then he offered first his own food to some birds and some animals like dog and uh cows etc now after if we had remain some food he was eating with joy and if we had no food remaining then he understand this is the grace of bhagwan so that i can do fast on this day even in his childhood he understood this very highest level of knowledge of spirituality in the village all the people of the village knew him about uh, knew him as a bhagat our dada guru ji's childhood name was popat bhagat now all knew him about uh, knew him as bhagat because he always doing bhajan he is always pass his extra time not wasting and not playing like a, like the ordinary children but he always pass his time in the temple he always used to go in the mandir the village has only one mandir and that is of the shivs popat bhagat always go to the mandir and perform the puja of shivling and pray to shiv ji not only this but after mandir whenever he he was in the farm he also pray there to lord and after coming from farm at evening at evening time he also after having bath he also always go to the temple and pray to bhagwan this is his schedule this is his daily routine now one day there were no any followers of bhagwan swaminar in the village but as the city junagar is near to the village sometimes bhagwan swaminar and saints used to visit that village limadra now one day popat bhagat was busy in his farm in the farming at the time the time was a uh, midday of the summer at the time sadguru gansyam jivandas ji swami from a junagadh swami narayan mandir with his other saints 
visiting one by one villages and preaching the divine message of bhagwan swaminarayan to the villagers now in this village as all knew about this village there was no any swaminarayan devotee in the village so most saints ignore the village and mostly never come to the village but ganshyam ji and swami he also come from bhagwan's aksardham and so he knew about this muktatma this popat bhagat and that is why he first time came to that village before the village in the outskirts there were the farm of popat bhagat and bhagat was working in the farm now on the way saints and some one or two devotees passing by the way popat bhagat saw the saints and he immediately gave off his work and just go to meet the saints now after meeting saints ganshyam ji and swami swami knew this is not the ordinary boy this is the already liberated soul he has no need to walk on the path of liberation but he can grant countless souls to the liberation so he ganshyam ji and swami after meeting and after talking for what is your name and uh, what are you doing here in the farm and this uh, formalities we can say the formalities after completing formalities ganshyam ji and swami said to the pope at bhagat oh boy become a saint renounce this all your families your relations your farm nothing will come with you ultimately we have to give up one day immediately popat bhagat without thinking about anything he ready to go with the swami ji and from the same day he had renounced his village he never go back to his village even nor his even see his village nor he go to ask the permission of his parents and just leave and give up all his relations his farm his parents his home everything behind and went with the ganshyam ji and swami and the other saints from this day he has renounced everything and living as a renunciant life now he come in the junagad mandir in the mandir bhagwan swami himself initiated and installed the form of lord shiva as in the village limadra popat bhagat always prayed to lord shiva now he, here in the junagad mandir he has the form of lord shiva now he is uh, he was also praying to lord shiva he prayed to lord shiva oh bhagwan i cannot understand who is the god whether you are the god or bhagwan swaminarayan is the god i don't know but i have trust in this sadhu i have firm faith in the words of my guru in ganshyam ji and swami's words i don't know about you who is the god at the same day in the dream lord shiva himself come into the dream of popat bhagat and himself said to popat bhagat bhagat i am merely the servants of bhagwan swami narayan there are countless millions of lord shiva who always 
praying to that god and that is the supreme personality of bhagwan swami narayan who is the only god of gods so you should take refuge of bhagwan swami narayan and his saints i am not the god i am his servant this is the words of lord shiva in the dream of popat bhagat now after waking at early morning when popat bhagat reach into the mandir and when he see the form of lord shiva at the same time he under uh, he remember his dream and he feel the same form of lord shiva in the temple is like saying at the at the time also that i am not the god please don't pray me further pray to bhagwan swami narayan he is the god now from that day popat bhagat decided this is the only god in the world in the countless millions of world there is only one god and that is bhagwan swami narayan he is the supreme lord lords of lords there is no any other person or any other deities similar of bhagwan swami narayan now this upasana leads him to his grand character for his character everybody can accept that we have never seen such divine personality in our life now there are so many talks about our puja dada guru ji we will talk about some incidents from next time but today we just pray to him oh swami ji oh our dada guru ji you are the ocean of mercy and you are the ocean of bhagwan's divine bliss so please grant us something so that we can even become able to understand your life your history your virtues and we can try to imbibe the same virtues from your life this is the only prayer we have to do for our puja dada guru ji and for our puja guru ji because if we have no attain our guru ji how can we understand the life of our puja dada guru ji so in this way we have to pray our dada guru ji as well as puja guru ji and say thank you to him and just try to imbibe the same virtues of this great divine personalities in our life this is the only work we have left to do in our life oh maharaj please grant us the eternal strength so that we can try to imbibe the same virtues and we can get the grace of those great personalities in our life ghanshyam maharaj ni jai સ્વામી 
संत कृपाए सुख उपजे संत कृपा थी सरे काम संत कृपा थी पामी ए पूरण पुरुषोत्तम दाम घनश्याम महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे सुप्रीम ऑम आईरी भगवान स्वामी नारायण पूज्यपाद गुरु जी पूज्य संतो इन ऑल ऑफ यू डिवोरीज माई जय स्वामी नारायण We don't have a lot of time, so I'll just make it nice and short and sweet, hopefully. So, about 95% of the people in the world, they want to please someone. That's why they live. Let me make it a little easier. If you are a husband to a wife, then obviously... The very purpose of you working, um, you know, having a career, earning money, is to please your wife with whatever money or however she is pleased, vice versa. If you are a son, you go to school and try to get your best grades to please your mother and father. Why? By seeing this, they become pleased. If you are even someone who is, don't, doesn't have any relation in the world, you still want to please your family, your mother, your father, your relatives. 95% of the world, in, people in the world, want to please someone. But have you ever thought about how God can be pleased? Have you ever, has that thought ever occurred or crossed your mind? Probably not. But in the Vachnamrut, Bhagwan Swami Narayan asks, or Swayam Prakasan Swami asks a very, very important question for all of us. He says, by which means is God extremely pleased? This is the question, that's it. By which means is God extremely pleased? Meaning in the world, we extremely want to please whoever and we make great efforts. But how can Bhagwan become pleased by our actions? Because after all, we are devotees of Bhagwan and we are followers. So our main goal should be to please Bhagwan, right? Now, I'm going to read it and then I'm going to give you a short example and then we'll end it there. Shriji Maharaj says, If a devotee who has only 20 kilograms of grains in his home, which is nothing, were to attain the sovereignty of a village or the sovereignty of five villages or the sovereignty of 50 villages or the sovereignty of 100 villages or even the sovereignty of the entire earth. And if after this he remains just as loving and humble with the saint as he previously was when he was poor and submissive and if he remains just as humble even if he were to attain the kingdom of Indralok or Brahmlok, then God would be extremely pleased. Before, if you were really poor and you had nothing in your home, but then you got a kingdom. When a human attains power, he becomes very much egotistical. Due to that, Bhagwan does not like it. So what Bhagwan is saying I would be extremely pleased with a devotee if he if he were at first poor, but if he got even a kingdom, he would still remain poor and submissive as before. Now check this fact out. I was researching, and remember a couple lectures back, we talked about Ladudanji, the story of how he became a saint, right? And how, you know, he uh, walked in Gadrada, and he had five thoughts that... If Bhagwan is Sarvopari, if Bhagwan is uh, he, if he, if Sriji Maharaj is really God, then you know he would be uh, wearing a red rose. Uh, he would show his sixteen symbols to me. Uh, pretty much, all his thoughts came through, to, true. And after that, he became a saint. But what you didn't know was the background of Laudanji. He wasn't an ordinary person. Let me read you a couple facts here. In 1805, that's Christ era, 
Ladu Lanji. This is what he owned. 11,000 rupees in cash. 22,000 rupees worth of Kori's Jam Patali. I don't even know how to say this stuff. But it, these are kinds of diamonds and gems. 90,000 uh, 90, Sonamors, meaning gold. 101 different types of sonamors, meaning gold. Jewelry stunned with golden nuggets, diamonds, pearls, rubies, and golden bracelet, necklets, rings, and brooches. Priceless designer clothing, shawls, scarves, and shoes. 16 horses, 7 camels, 4 oxen, a palanquin, and a buffalo cart, uh, chariot. Silver and golden jewelry for even his horses, camels, and oxen, meaning his animals. 50 servants, 25 bodyguards, and 25 chariot drivers. Now, at that time, he's probably the Bill Gates of his time, we can say. Probably the richest person in that era. According to the scriptures, this is. Now, after seeing Bhagwan, and after his five thoughts were completed, he completely melted in Bhagwan's words and became a saint and surrendered everything onto Bhagwan. Meaning, all this thing, all the things that I just read, the 11,000 rupees, the 90,000 sonamors worth of gold, the chariots, the oxen, all the horses, everything he gave to Bhagwan. But, this is what the trick was. Bhagwan was pleased by what? How great he was, how much value he had, how much wealth he had, or was Bhagwan pleased upon he had wealth, he had all the talent in the world, he knew how to sing, he was a poet, he had everything, yet he became humble and gave everything up. What is it? Because he gave everything up, right? In the same exact fashion. We don't have any of these luxuries in our lifetime. And I'm sorry to say, but we'll probably never have any of this stuff. I highly doubt it. No one's going to win the, uh, the lottery anytime soon. I'm not discouraging you. This is a good thing. But even if we don't win the lottery, at least we can stay humble in our life. Even if we don't have anything, at least we can stay humble. This is my point to you. Even in the time of Sri Jimaraj, I'm reminded of a story that Bhagwan himself, his humility, his humbleness was beyond anyone. He showed his humbleness in many of his life incidents. At one time, a group of devotees were came to Gadara for the darshan of Bhagwan. So at first, Sri Jimaraj was in Lakshmi Vadi, which was across from Dada Kachar's Durbar. It's like a garden area where uh, Bhagwan and those devotees who came were sitting and they listened to Bhagwan's discourses and then Bhagwan went back to Dada Kachar's Durbar and then after a little while, the devotees went back. While they're crossing the way from Lakshmi Vadi to Dada Kachar's Durbar, there was a alleyway and everyone was walking and there was a boy also in uh you know with the group of devotees and the boy he had a really bad habit of spitting so he was spitting and he spat on his right side without looking at one time and a jain saint was sitting there and he spat directly on the saint obviously that's an insult because if anyone would spit on you you would be insulted right you would feel this is disgusting. I mean, how could someone do this? Anyone would. The Jain saint directly got up. And he became upset, furious. That this Swamiran child, he spat on me. And he spread the world. Uh, he spread the word throughout the whole village. Saying that look at how bad. And look, kind of, look at what kind of morals Swamiran teaches his devotees. How bad is this child? He even told all of the surrounding villagers to close their shops and not to sell even anything to any devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan or anything. 
So a boycott was in session. Bhagwan immediately found out about this action. He knew the boy, it was a simple mistake, it was his arrogance, and he had a bad habit. But what did Bhagwan do? He went directly to where the saint was, and he folded his hands and bowed down and said, Please forgive me on behalf of this child who is innocent and who did not know and who had this bad habit. And please forgive me. I will take his blame. I will take whatever punishment you give me. But please become happy. Now, let me ask you something. A poor person can do this to another poor person. Even a person of medium class can do this and become humble to another person who is of the same level or even a little lower. But if a king were to become completely humble against his servant, how would that look towards the kingdom? Just think, would the king look very, very great? Or would he look very, very weak to his people? If you think about it, the king would look very, very great. Why? Because the people would think that he is this great, yet he is being humble even towards a person who has no value against him. In the same exact way, Bhagwan Swaminarayan, who is beyond comprehension to our minds, who is supreme beyond all, who is the Lord of Lords, he even folds his hands when he comes on this earth and bows down to even a saint who may have value, but who is nothing compared to him because of a mistake that not Bhagwan did, but another person did, showing that humility is very, very valuable and very, very cherished by Bhagwan. So, just like how we are trying to please our parents if we are a child by getting good grades, or just like how if we are a husband or a wife, we're trying to please each other, in the same fashion, according to this Vajramrut, Gadda, middle chapter, 25th Vajramrut, the last question by Swayam Prakasan Swami, Swami says, that how could God become extremely pleased? The answer is, to stay humble in life is the best key to please Bhagwan. Saying this, my humble Jai Swami Narayan. Shri Patim Shri Dharam Sarvade Vishwaram Bhakti Dharmatvajam Vasudevam Are Madhavam Kesavam Kamdam Karam Swami Narayanam Nilakantham Vajay Ganesham Maharajani Jai